Hi! Welcome back! In a previous video, we learned about customizing plots using matplotlib. If you haven't watched it yet or are interested in learning more about these concepts, I'd suggest you check that out as well. In this video, we're going to be exploring Seaborn regression plots. Seaborn is another really useful Python library for visual representations. If you'd like to know more about the fundamentals of Seaborn, you can watch my first Python for machine learning introduction video. We'll learn about exploring inbuilt datasets, part of Seaborn, working with one dataset, creating a linear model plot, utilizing hue and markers for specificity and customization. Let's jump right in. Okay, so um, first step is to import some uh, Python libraries. So we're gonna import Seaborn as SNS. Um, and then we want to have this line again, the matplotlib inline, um, because this also requires us to show the um, plots in Jupyter Notebook. Um, now the next step is to import or to load a data set. And Seaborn actually has some inbuilt data sets, so we're going to use this tips one. Um, if you'd like to explore some other ones, you can kind of search that up on your own. But this is the one we'll be using in this video. So it kind of shows um, a restaurant scenario where the, there are um, different kind of features, um, such as total bill, uh, time, size, things like that. And we can predict the um, tip of an order based on that. So based on all these features, what is the, um, the, the predicted tip of a customer to the restaurant? Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is explore a linear model plot. And so this is lmplot. And um, how we're going to do this is we're going to say sns.lmplot. And then we're going to see, um, we are going to see by doing shift tab what it needs. So it needs an x, y, data, hue, call, row, um, palette. These are all options. But the main things that we, we need are the x um, and the y and the data which is the first thing that we're going to do here. And then I'll um, show a couple more uh, variances to customize it even more. So our X in this case is going to be um, total bill and our Y is going to be tip because tip is the thing that we want to predict. And we're in this case, we're predicting it based off of the total bill. And then our data is of um, tip. So here is just a, a visual representation of the relationship between total bill and tip. Um, so we can see that it's pretty linear. And the more the tip total bill is, um, the more the tip is predicted to be. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is kind of customize it a little bit more by adding a hue layer. And what this hue does is it basically color codes it based on whatever column we specify. So here we're doing it based on time. So it's going to have two colors, one for lunch and the other for dinner. And this allows us to kind of visualize um, the effect of the time of day um, on the tip based on the total bill. So it kind of integrates three variables, even though it's a linear model with only um, an X and a Y. Um, so the next thing that we want to um, do is change the markers. So um, for this, this uh, just allows us to have both of them not as circles, but different um, shapes. And so in this case, our lunch is a circle and we've changed the, um, the dinner into a square. Um, so, so far we've seen how we can add a hue to differentiate between both on the same plot. Um, but now we'll look at how we can separate plots into two based on a column. So it's still going to kind of use the time to differentiate between the two, but this time instead of having it on the same one, we're going to have two different plots. So we're going to do this by saying um, sns.lmplot and then the same x and y and the data, um, but this time the column is going to be time rather than the hue. Um, and as you can see, there are two plots on the same canvas here, one for time equals lunch and the other for time equals dinner. So same um, output, just different uh, different visualization. Now the last thing we're going to do is um, change the size. Um, and so this changes the size of the overall canvas. Um, so when we make it 10, we make it much bigger. So the dots appear smaller um, and overall it just kind of scatters them out, them out even more. If we change it to 50, it's going to be absolutely huge. Um, we can't even make sense out of this. All we can see is that there is a linear correlation, but we can't really see um, how far apart the points are from the lines and things like that. So it's not too helpful. So um, I would say, and yeah, and this is way too small. So kind of how it was before would be um, best. So just to recap, we imported this, um, this data set and then we saw a simple linear model and then we added a hue and um, 
We also created some uh, new charts where we have two of them and then we played around with the size a little bit. Well, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below any questions you may have. I've also included a little activity in the description box that relates to the skills we learned in this video, so I welcome you to try that out as well. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.